All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Jeffrey Pinheiro. You know me more as the Revit Kid. I'm just going to start my recorder here so we have a nice high quality version of this for later use. Welcome to the first ever BIM After Dark happy hour. I've been wanting to do this for a while. I just haven't had the time or set it up. Um, so we're going to use Google Hangouts. I'm not sure how well it's going to work. Hopefully it does. Hopefully you can hear me well and hopefully you can see everything you need to see. There are also uh, Q and A's if you're I believe if you're viewing via Google Plus, you can ask questions. Uh, feel free to ask questions. Just make sure they're relevant to the conversation, I guess. Not just all over the place Revit questions, because I know we have plenty of those. So yeah, so today what I'm going to do, first of all, I want to make sure everyone has their drinks in their hands. I'm actually drinking a white port wine with a nice ice cube in it. Um, feel free to tweet me a photo of what you're drinking at the Revit Kid. I'd love to see that. I'm sure everyone else would. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk a little bit about the ebook that I just released in the beginning of this week. Um, if you are here, you most likely have downloaded. Let me hide this. You most likely have downloaded the ebook because you got the ebook when you signed up for this uh, webinar. What I wanted to do is something a little crazy, considering it's happy hour. It's Friday afternoon. We're all drinking. Um, I'm going to try. And using the process I put forward in this ebook, design and render a building in one hour. So if you flip through this, hopefully you guys have, you kind of have an idea of what my process is as far as creating these quick images and, and designing sort of my design workflow using Revit. Um, and the building I'm going to do, I, originally I was going to do the building from, from the ebook and just sort of walk through different pieces of it. But I decided it'd be more fun and a little impractical, but definitely more fun to try and do something from scratch. So what I'm gonna do is after after this is done, after this whole uh, webinar is done, I'm gonna, all of this is gonna be recorded and I'm gonna post probably on Monday or Tuesday about it. And I'll have the sample files, which is what you're looking at now, this folder structure uh, for you guys to download. And the building that I am going to do, let me delete that backup file. You'll also get these sketches. So when I was studying for the ARES, like a lot of you, I'm sure, you uh, you tend to go off on tangents in your notebooks and sketch different things. And there was a building that I just sort of sketched quite a bit within my notebook. So what I have here is scan images of those sketches from my notebooks. And those of you that are familiar with the AREs or maybe took them, the architecture registration exam, you might even recognize some of the notes above. So I don't remember which one this was. Clearly, it's back in January of 14, I guess. And as I scroll through these, you'll get a sense of the sketches that I created within the books. Some of these, for instance, this last one actually has a Kaplan Lesson 12 notes on the top of it. Those of you who took the test know that the word Kaplan and ballast drive you nuts now. So I've got all these sketches here, and I've always just kind of wanted to model this building based on these sketches. I drew tons of sketches of it throughout this notebook. I guess it's a house. It was it was meant to be a house. I don't know where it is, but it's just one of these one of those drawings that I just kept redrawing and redrawing. So I figured it'd be kind of fun to use it, use the process in the ebook and actually build and maybe even get a rendering out of out of these sketches. So we'll look real quickly at the ebook and the process that I typically use. So it usually starts with a concept or a program or a diagram, which is basically those sketches that you saw before. So I didn't really have a party per se in those sketches, but I did have a couple of rough floor plans, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> so that's really what we're going to start with there. Well, the pens we don't really need to talk about. You're not going to see that. And now we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is massing. So I always like to start with a very rough mass. Uh, kind of like a, a sketch physical model, if, if if you're familiar with making those. But I like to make it in Revit because, of course, I would rather use Revit than anything else. Um, so we're going to start with that. We're going to bring in the, the sketch, and then we're going to make a quick mass model of it. So I'm going to go into my file here. Again, these final files and this recording is going to be live or on the blog at some point in time. Sorry about that. I should probably turn my phone off. Hopefully you didn't hear that, but I'm getting 
tweets and I didn't turn my phone off. Okay. So the image I'm going to use is going to be the sketch. Let's go into the sketches again. That's more of a sectional and then a plan diagram. There's one plan that has a little bit of detail that I hand sketched. Um, <clears throat> I like these sections. These are going to help big time. You can see, I, I for some reason, I was drawing a lot of sections of the building. So this is the image that I'm going to use, mainly because it's got a floor plan that, if I remember correctly, I actually pulled the scale out for, or maybe just a ruler and, and use it as a scale. So there might be something that I can actually pull a little, a little scale from and make something somewhat realistic. So I'm going to... That's the image I'm going to bring. I'm not even going to bother editing it. I'm just going to bring it in for the sake of usage. So I just drag the image into my floor plan. I should, probably should have edited it just because there's a bunch of crap in the image, but that's all right. We can deal. <clears throat> so the, the file I'm using, actually, the template is, I think it was just another project that I deleted some stuff from, mainly because we only have an hour and I want to try and, I literally want to try and get to a rendering. So I used a, a file that has some materials and stuff already already in it. Excuse me while I take a drink. So the first thing we want to do is scale our image. Now, if you notice, I brought it into my level one floor plan just because it's a floor plan. If your building was more sectional, then maybe you end up bringing the image, image in as a section. But now I'm just going to scale it. So I select the image. I type RE on the keyboard, which is also on the modify uh, toolbar. It's a little uh, scale. I like using this keyboard shortcut. So RE. And I know for a fact that this sink was drawn or this countertop was drawn at two feet. So I'm just going to quickly dimension it, which is it came in at 11 feet. And then I'm going to type two feet and scale it right down. But now, for the most part, we have a scaled sketch. The one thing I noticed is that in my sketch, the north arrow is actually pointing right. Um, so I guess for whatever reason, I wanted that to be south. Uh, th this wall on the left hand side. So I'm just going to quickly rotate this image so that, I mean, we could do the true north thing and, and rotate it all, but for the sake of this webinar, let's not go down that road. And the last thing I'm going to do is make sure that these lines are actually straight. So I'm just using rotate on my keyboard, R O. And you'll notice that these lines are a little off. So let me turn off the snap override. So I can get just to where I need and then straighten them out. There we go. So I just rotated the image so it's nice and straight. So now we have a scaled image, relatively speaking. Um, it's nice and straight. And then I'm going to pin it. The more I'm doing this and the more I'm thinking down the road. I mean, I did plan this, but the more I'm thinking about it, I'm like, am I really going to get this done in an hour? Let's see. So if you'll notice, again, this isn't a diagram. It's a little more of a developed plan, but... Uh, the train eye can start to see some things that I drew here um, that I meant to sort of emphasize, which again is this, it's this wall that's on the left-hand side and then runs across the building. And there's another wall here. And then I keep drawing this section, which I assume is through the short, short uh, direction. And you can see there's a nice tilted shed roof and it's all opening towards the south side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly model a mass, but I'm not going to use the massing tool. Why? Because I don't need to. Um, <clears throat> Honestly, just maybe because of uh, the massing tool didn't exist when I first started learning Revit. Uh, I just I only use it when I really, really need to. You could use massing tool if you're comfortable with it to make these shapes, but uh, the shapes are very rudimentary, so you can easily use a model in place family. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go to component and I'm going to say model in place. I guess I'll save the project. Now it's going to ask me for what type of family I'm going to use. I'm going to use a generic model. You could choose whatever you like. We're going to keep this generic models one. We'll call this, I shouldn't call it mass. That would be a little misleading. Um, we'll say sketch model one. Now we're in our, our create uh, extrusions and, and you know uh, family components in place area. So we've got create extrusions, blends, revolve, sweeps. You know, we got all our, our rudimentary shapes. So I'm going to probably make them make most of this using extrusions. And so the first extrusion I'm going to make is going to be this wall. Yes, I could just start with a wall, but that defeats the purpose of, of what I was trying to do. So we're going to make a quick wall. I'm just sketching an extrusion for the wall. I'll make it something like one foot six. Again, this is a hand sketch, so 
don't expect it to be perfect with your with your lovely magenta lines. And then for now, I'm just going to give it a height of 10 feet. We'll check it out in a little while. Uh, the material, for some reason, is going to something called letters. I'll just leave that for now. So if I go to 3D, here's my lovely wall. Now I'm going to draw my uh, sectional profile of the building. So what I want to do is I want to draw a reference plane at the face of this glass wall. So hopefully you can see that. It's kind of hard with the sketch, but there's a reference plane right here, and it's in place of the glass wall. So now when I go to my sectional or my elevation view to draw my extrusion, I know exactly where I want this to be based on the sketch because I don't have the sketch set up. If you want, we could bring the sketch into, into the elevation. That might be kind of fun, but let's see how we can do without it. So now I just went to my east elevation, and here's the reference plane I just drew, and here's my wall I just modeled. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an extrusion. I'm going to pick a plane. So now I, what I did is I picked the the horizontal or the vertical plane of that wall. So now I'm drawing on something. I'll show you exactly what's happening in 3D. But for now, before I draw this, I want to check my section sketch to see what I did there. Let's check it out. So we're making basically this shape in here. So it looks like it's a little bit above the wall, maybe maybe a foot or two. So we'll do that for now. Remember, this is only the, a sketch section. So that's 12. Let's go up to 12 feet. Something fun like that. I don't remember if that was it. Let's see. Let's, looks like I had a little bit less of a pitch, so I'll just quickly model that. Okay, now I'm going to go to 3D so you can see what happened. So now you can see here's that extrusion we just made, and I based it off of the front of this wall, which is why it's sort of coming out, which is fine. We can adjust that later, but I just needed something to draw on in that direction. So now I'm going to take this. I'm going to grab my push and pulls. I'm going to throw it back here. Let me go back to my floor plan now. And we're just going to align this with our face. So now you can see we've got two shapes, and we're starting to sort of form this diagram that is going to be our building. I'll go back to the floor plan. There's another wall that's going in this direction, which connects the garage and the living room, sort of. I'm going to draw those two walls. All I did was select the wall that I created before, and it creates similar. So I type CS on my keyboard. Or you right click and say create similar. So I'm going to quickly model these. The same thing, I'll copy it through. Finish, and then go to 3D. Those are our other walls. And I could start with just regular walls, but I'm trying to show you how, how the sort of sketch model portion works. So now we have two more forms to build before we do any sort of uh, wrapping of forms. And one is going to be this living room, and the other is going to be this garage. I don't remember if I ever thought about what the garage looks like. Let's see. Looks like the living room, I was thinking about some sort of a chevron roof system there. We'll see how that looks. The garage doesn't look like I ever even decided. So let's let's do that chevron shape first. Not that it's going to be the final shape, but go back to my elevation now, to my east elevation. I'm going to do create similar. I'm going to pick this wall as my plane. Now I'm going to draw the same thing, 12 feet. I don't remember exactly how far this went out. I should have checked in that reference plane. Let me double check here. I'm going to draw that reference plane like I did before. Back to my east elevation. Look at that. I was almost dead on. Pretty cool. I'll align that. Okay. Now I'm just going to connect the dots here. Connect the dots. Let's see how that looks. Not too bad. Looks like it was a little shallow, a little more shallow. 
I forbid I draw some symmetry, right? So let's pull that down there. No more. Okay. Now if I go to 3D, we'll see exactly what we just drew. See where this face goes. Looks like it wants to align. We can do that. Now finally, we'll do our garage mass. So you can see here, we've, we're starting to form something. You know, this I'm just really trying to go through that, that workflow in, in a visual medium instead of just the book so you get an idea of what I was going at. So now, for the garage, I'm just going to take this block that I drew for for the living room and I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to type CO on the keyboard and copy it. And then I'm just going to pull it. Again, remember this is a sketch model, so the idea is to be a little fluid. So I'm just pushing and pulling it to make it fit here and see what happens there. Oh, there's somewhat of a garage. So now we have our mass there. Let's just call this the mass for now. You know, I obviously have an idea of, of what I want to do as far as some a little more details with the roofs and whatnot. But right now, I just want to get a feel for the three-dimensional form. One thing I noticed in one of these sketches that I drew, if I pull the sketches back up, is, let's see, looks like I was having the grade for whatever reason slope. Maybe it was a mountain site. I wish I could remember. Looks like I had the grade sloping, and then this walked down. That's where the stairs were going, down to a, a two-story portion of this building. So before I do my little 3D views and study the actual model, I want to model, model that site and make this a little more realistic to what I was expecting. So I'm going to go to my site plan, which has some sort of property line on it. Let's delete that. I'm going to quickly model a site. Again, remember, this is all sketch stuff. There's no nothing special about it. Uh, zero, I believe, is our first floor. So I'm just going to quickly put a zero here. And then maybe it's negative 10 feet down at the lower end. 10 feet there. And I want the zero to start at the house, so I'll do one more zero here. And then click, oops, and then click finish. Now if I go in 3D, ooh, it's nice and brown, huh? Let's turn hidden lines off, there we go. You can see we've got a sloping site. Now let me just go back into this mass and make it a little, a little bit deeper into the site. We should probably do it in one of the elevation views, but for now, this is exactly what I want to do. Let's pull this down. Finish. I'm going to turn on some shadows and stuff so you can at least see what's going on a little better. We can make it smooth, too. There you go. So now you get a sense of what's going on. So what I would typically do now in my process after after I first pull this down, let's pull these two down. What I would typically do is I'd set up some camera views because I'm looking at it from above. You're not going to get much of a sense of, of what's going on. And I would set up views that you would notice look kind of like this. These are all perspective views. So you get a, a good sense of what's going on to scale. So I'm going to go to one of my floor plans. Let's go to level one for now. Now let's create a couple camera views. First, let me get out of my in-place editor. View, 3D view camera. So I'm just creating a couple camera views. Now you can see we're starting to study it in section. I probably have a view template set up. So let me, let me click that. A little ambient shadows, so you start to see it. And I'll just create a couple of views like this and start studying the model a little bit. Apply template properties, hidden line ambient. And what's nice about it is that you could also quickly create design options and study different forms. For example, if I wanted to, let's say, change the, the shape of this garage, what I would do is I would go under Manage, Design Options, create a new set 
create a new option. Sorry, I'm going fast, but I just realized it's 420. <clears throat> and then we could rename these. I'm not going to rename these right now. But we can take this form now and add it to those options. So if I go to Manage, Add to Sets, add it to both sets. But now when we go to Option 2 on the bottom here, we can edit this form. So let's just say this, instead of going in that direction, we decide this is just going to be a flat roof. Or maybe, maybe we tilt it the other way. Hmm. Back and forth roofs. Click finish. Then we click finish. So now when I'm in my views here, let's say I'm on this view, I can quickly flip through different sketch options. If you could see that garage back there and get a feeling for what those changes are going to do. So that's a real basic introduction to how I would use Revit as sketch models. Now I'm going to get rid of those design options so I can try and get to where I want it to be. Finish editing that. Accept primary. Close. OK. So let's just say this is, we're happy with it. I'm not going to say I am, but let's say we are. Now I'm going to start adding a little detail. So in my ebook, Massing Studies, again, that was what I was talking about with design options. You can start playing with different options here and there within those design options. Now this is what I call skinning the form. So in these larger buildings that I was showing down here, it makes more sense to leave this core element and just sort of wrap it. We're going to do kind of the same idea here. So we've got some nice, easy forms that, that we can follow. Um, obviously, we've got some nice, easy, let's go back to this. We've got some nice, easy roofs, floors. I mean, there's nothing really, nothing really difficult for Revit to create as far as these sketches are concerned. So I'm just going to quickly try and bring these out. So I'm going to convert this mass to a Revit actual Revit elements, I should say. So let's see if we got anything here. Looks like I have a wall, large wall here. I don't know what material those are, but we'll find out. Look at that. It's actually the same size as a two-foot wall. How huh? nice. So now I'm just drawing these walls. Again, I could have done this from the beginning. And I guess with time permitting, I should have, but that's all right. So now I use this mass as sort of my my guide or my skeleton to start modeling stuff. I guess I'll, I'll select these walls. I should probably make a level for that lower level just to make my life easier. So let's make a quick level. Sorry if I'm clicking a little fast. OK. So again, we were going down 10 feet. So I'm just going to create similar. Go down 10 feet. This is going to be our new level this way if I need to put anything on it. So this one we're going to call, I don't know, lower level something, whatever. OK. Now we can make these walls jump down to it. I'm just selecting these walls. Jump this down to lower level. And I'm going to make it go up to level 1 plus 10 feet. Feet, not 41 feet. There we go. Beautiful. Now I'm going to quickly do my floor because I know that there's a um, a big deck out here that I want to show. It's going to help with some of the stuff before. So I'm going to quickly put a floor in it, and I'm going to use an actual Revit floor. Generic 12-inch. It's good enough for me. And I'm going to quickly model this. Finish. No. Now you can see we're starting to put this floor on it. So again, I'm starting to wrap this sketch model as detail. I'm not deleting it. I'm using it as, as my skeleton. Now I'm going to create those roof forms, which you can see here. Here's the roof form there. There's the roof form there. Looks like it overhangs quite a bit. So I'm going to use the roof tool. I'm going to draw a roof that's overhanging quite a bit. Don't need to be perfect for this. And now I'm going to make this back portion uh, define the slope. So now it's just going to be a shed roof. 
So let's do something like a 412 for now and see how that looks. Again, I'm using a generic 12 inch. Uh, I can use generic 12 inch standing seam. Sure, let's do standing seam. And you can see we're starting to form this, this roof here. So that's the element I just drew there. So let me check this in elevation. Looks like 412 might have been a little more than what I had sketched. I guess I can go three and a half. We are in Connecticut after all. We don't want to go too shallow. I'll move this up two feet. Here we go. Again, I'm not following this perfectly now just because we're getting a little more refined. Now we're starting to get that form there. What I want to do is the same on these roofs over here. So let's... Let's do a little quick shortcuts. I'm going to mirror this roof over the top here. I type DM on the keyboard, flip it over, and then I can just edit the footprint of this in my floor plan. And I can pull this back and pull this back a little bit. Just trying to save a little time here. Click finish, go to 3D, check it out. There we go there. Now we're making that nice winged house here. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to copy this. And go to my roof plan so you can see it. I'm just going to copy this. Oh, I don't know why that has a stipple. Let's figure that out later. Copy this over the garage to make sure it fits nicely. Go in 3D. Wow, that's a big roof on the garage. Let's, re let's remove that a little bit. Again, I'm not being perfect. Uh, three and a half, good. Go to 3D. So there we go. We got our garage roofs. Perfect. Now I'm going to start wrapping it with walls. So if I go to my first floor, I'm going to use this and pretend this is the internal piece. I'm just going to skin it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it to wireframe so I can see my sketch. Or actually, I should... Uh, I should just make this box transparent. So I'm just highlighting my, my mask there, and I'm going to override it. Oops, override it in view. And we're going to check the cut patterns, visible. Oops, do transparency. Nope, I guess it, might, it must be the category. models that off we're gonna make these transparent let's let's not let me see through it I'm just gonna hide this for a second then oh it was my floor oops see even the Revit kid screws up sometimes let me hide this the floor I'm gonna make the floor transparent Change it to wireframe, and there we go. All right. Sorry about that. I actually I was hiding the mass, but I wasn't hiding the floor. Okay. So now you can see we've got our our mass is still here. I can select it, and our floor is still here. I can select it. I'm just going to draw a couple different things here. First, I'm going to draw my exterior wall, which we're going to use exterior siding. And I'm going to make sure I zoom in here. See, there's my wall. I'm just going to draw this along here a couple places. This way. Oh. It'll all make sense at the end, I swear. So let me pull this back. this back one more wall I'll drag this across I'll go to 3d to show you what I did I made little short walls let's make those taller so I made these three walls and they're outside of my core element for some reason they're only going up six inches let's change that to 10 feet Hi. there we go we got some walls so now let's make those a little taller make those 12 feet Nah, we'll do 10 feet again, just like the wall beyond. 
So now we're going to have some fun with lovely curtain walls. So I'm going to draw some curtain walls in floor plan. And it's just, I'm going to start with curtain wall one. I'm not sure what it's going to do. I'm just going to wrap this whole thing with curtain wall. Again, it's at six inches. I should have checked that again. I don't know what I was doing that was six inches in this model. Okay, so now we've got our curtain wall here. And of course, it's it's blowing out the uh, the other walls, mainly because it's set to... Um, let me pull this up so we can see it. It's actually set to cut these walls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it first, and then I'll edit the profile. So I'm going to attach the top of these walls to this roof. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to edit the profile. Go west. Nope, not west. Sorry. That would be south. So there's our... our our walls. I'm going to just quickly edit the profile of these. Pull it down. And I'm going to wrap it around the walls here. Here. Removing constraints. Sorry. Those of you who like constraints. I'm going to go up 10 feet where those walls topped off, and I'm going to draw it across here. Trim it up and copy this along. I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm just uh, modifying the curtain wall to go around these walls that I drew originally. I guess I could have just said the curtain wall not to, uh, not to embed. I guess we'll try and do something a little right here today. From these, a half hour, we're good. We're good. Okay, click finish here. Unjoin elements because it's mad at me. Let's go back to 3D. So there we go. So we wrapped it around. It's probably not going to let me attach it now because I edited the profile. That's fine. I'll just go back to edit. So I go back to edit profile and make this guy attach. Line. The top of this curtain wall with the top of that. Click finish. There we go. So now we're starting to get a building. And remember, we had those views before, so we're starting to get some views here. We're seeing something happen. It's a pretty tall forehead, huh? I guess I should shrink that a little bit, but we'll deal with it. It's south. You want some sunlight. Okay. So now we could do the same thing over here. I will quickly draw... Some curtain wall. Let's draw. Oops. Quite similar for some curtain wall. We'll wrap it around the corner. For the sake of time and to get to where I want to be, I'm not going to wrap the garage because I have no idea what it's going to look like. And we'll just keep it out of the rendering. We got a nice. Oh, this one, this wall, we're going to make our siding, whatever our siding is. Siding. Attach this to the roof. We can do, let's do some curtain wall. Just going to model some curtain wall in here. On top of this guy. Oops, I'm way up in the air, huh? There we go. Okay. They say you can't fudge anything in Revit. Come on. Okay. Now we're starting to get something that looks remotely like a building. So I can quickly develop a few more things there. Let's, let's just develop these two elevations for the sake of time. If you notice, the curtain wall I used was actually, it only had a... It only had a... Um, a vertical, sorry, let me see here. If I go in here, you can see it only has a vertical grid at three foot on center. That's because typically a horizontal grid is not going to uh, be very uniform. So I'm just going to add some horizontal grids. 
We could add a couple here. Maybe one more down here. Go in 3D and see what I'm doing. So I'm just wrapping this thing. So now I'm just clicking some horizontal grids. Oh, no. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so there goes my time limit. So one thing you should know when you're doing curtain grids in Revit, even if you are on Revit 2015, update release 5, you can still create a serious error that will crash your Revit file. So I guess I'm going to have to go to plan B. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Let me see if I could get a recovery file out of it. I guess I'll take another drink while I'm waiting. I'm sure you guys have run into the same issues with the curtain walls. It's a blast, isn't it? Again, you can do Q&A on the right-hand side. I think it's under Google+. Plus. It's on the top right. All right. Sweet. Looks like the recovery file worked. Let me save that before I lose some more. I'm not even going to rename it for now. Let's try that again. Hit a couple millions in here, a couple millions in there. Okay. Now we're just going to add millions to those grids. So under architecture, I'm going to click millions and I'm going to do all grid lines. Got some nice millions there. I'll do some more here. Oops, I didn't do the vertical grids or the horizontals on this guy, huh? Do the horizontals real quick since they're going to be in my view. And I'm that. So I'm going to add a couple of these guys. I'm going to add some millions. Now let's add a little bit of detail before we talk about materials and lighting and rendering. So I'm going to add some railings around my my deck here. Let's make that a chain so I'm not sitting here all day. So in 3D, you can see what I'm doing. I'm just sketching a railing on here. Finish. That's good enough of a railing. <clears throat> now we've got a railing. We've got some some roofs. We've got some windows. I'm also going to add uh, a little bit of fascia to the to the roof here. So I have roof fascia set up already. We could do a one by eight, let's say, just to give an extra line. You can see I'm just adding an extra line there. Wrap this around. Okay, and now in the absence of time again, I'm going to quickly create some standing seam metal roof, which I'll post in the, when I post this uh, on Monday, I will post my tutorial to quickly creating standing seam roofs, but um, I'm going to do it here. I know it's in the file, so all I do is I copy and paste it, align to the same place. So now I have two roofs there, and I have a roof that I created. Again, there's another tutorial on it. I'll post a link to it that is standing seam roof. So what it is, is it's actually sloped glazing, and I'm using the mullion. So if I click there, and then I just have to move it up. So if I go to my elevation, which isn't open, or I could just do an offset for now. I'll do an offset of 14 feet to get it outside. You can see I got some nice standing seam roof. Let me go to my elevation to make sure it's perfect. Select all in view. I'm just going to move my standing seam down so it's somewhat flush. Now look at that. We got some standing seam. We're getting somewhere. Very cool. So let's go back to 
The one thing I want to do actually before before I because I know we're gonna need it is I'm gonna put a, a concrete wall on this lower level. Just so I don't see that core element behind it. So I'm gonna do a concrete foundation wall. Foundation, concrete, or foundation. Finish face interior, so I can just wrap the thing. There we go. So now at least it looks like the building's sitting on something. Maybe in this one we do uh, we do a curtain wall or something. Let's do a curtain wall inside. Maybe it's just against the wall here. Nice little sliver to detach it. I'll do it on the other side too. Why not? So if I go in 3D, you can see what I just did there. Ooh, kind of nice. Okay. Now I'll just give these mullions. Give these mullions. Okay, cool. A lot of glass for Connecticut, huh? Jeez. Uh, the one thing I want to do before I go to the rendering part. Ooh, what do we got? In two minutes? I guess I'll jump to the rendering part. So we skin the form. Now the next stage, if if uh, Photoshop, wow, even Photoshop is not responding. The next stage is the presentation export render. So I'm not doing any night views. We're just going to do day lighting. So I just got to, I just want to make sure that the materials are good. So let's do the materials. So let's go back to our view. This first 3D view, I'll go down a little bit here. You can look up. It's a lot of glass. So this is the view that I'm going to render for the sake of this tutorial. I have no idea what these materials look like. It's probably whatever I did from the past one. So there we go. First, I need to change this god off of brown. I should probably save it before I start going to materials. Two things that are going to crash Revit for you are materials and curtain walls. Know that and live by that. Oops. So I have grass material here. Whatever. Okay. Oh, trees. That was a bad one to use. Fifteen minutes. Can he do it? Sight. I guess I don't have any grass in this model. No grass. Okay. Okay, so there's our lo lovely yellow grass. So the one material I know I want to change is this siding. Well, let me just save this again before we do it. Is this siding? And I want to make it instead of brick. For some reason, it's brick. We're going to make it siding. So these are custom materials I've had. Uh, there's a bunch of materials. I'll post links to all the custom material tutorials I have. We're going to do this siding because it's already made. It looks like it's a vertical gray siding. There we go. I got some vertical gray siding. This wall wants to fly out further before I set the rendering. And it needs to return. So what I mean by that is on the end here, there's no material. Let me go back to the 3D view. Oh, there's a material. It must have been wrapping. So there we go. It's not returned. Perfect. So now, <clears throat> I'm pretty happy with the materials. They're good enough for now, for the time we have. The last one I need to do is my core material. So if I go to my 3D view, let me just save it one more time. If I go to my 3D view, I'm going to isolate that core material. Isolate element. I'm going to go to realistic so you can see what the material is, not ray trace. Oh, boy. So that material is that funny A letters one that I started with. So let me select this. And I'm going to call this material, there's a core material. And what that is is basically a building facade plastered onto this core material. So if I go into appearance, you can see this is actually what it looks like. 
So it's a building facade. It's plastered onto the core material. Now I just want to check to make sure it's three foot on center. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, 18, perfect. Click OK. Click Finish. Now I'm, I'm going to reset high type temporary isolation. So now we've got this material here that looks like a building on the inside. So we can quickly render. Ooh, let's pull this back. Get that concrete under there. Okay. Oops, this one's got to go a little bit further because we don't want to have that. Okay, there we go. Now we go to our 3D view. You can see we've got our core material, which is nice, and we've got the rest of our materials applied. So I just want to make sure the sun settings are okay. So I'm going to go to my lighting. It's, it's summer solstice, which is good. 10 a.m., ground plane at level 1. We want to change the ground plane to, level, to lower level or just no ground plane because we have a site. So let's do that. Click OK. Save it. So now I'm going to quickly send it to the cloud, and we'll talk while I'm on the cloud. Let's see. So render in the cloud. I highly suggest you do some test renderings before getting to the stage, but what are you going to do? We'll do final, but I'll only do it at 9 megapixels alpha transparency and I start rendering. So now it's getting sent to the cloud. And while it's going there, what I want to talk about a little bit is a lot of people have asked me in the past about uh, Photoshop being the only tool I use for editing. Um, Photoshopping is great, but um, I know it is expensive. So a lot of people have asked me if there's any alternatives. What I've been playing around with is a Google Plus Photo Editor. So to get to that, it's plus.google.com slash photos if you have a Google Plus uh, account. Obviously, if you don't have one, feel free to make one. It's free. And what I've done is I created an album under Photos. Oops, not people. Let's try that again. Under Photos. The one thing you can't do in, in this, though, just to let you know, is you can't add layers. So you can edit the image, and it has a lot of great things like Photoshop, but you just can't add layers. So if you're adding a background or entourage, you have to do that in a different photo, in a different area. So if I go to my albums, what I've done is I created a, a rendering album, which is private. So I'm the only one who gets to see that, except for my dog there. I must have used him in the rendering album. That's all right. So what you can do here is you can upload photos and you can edit them. So if I go into, let's say, this image here, this is a rendering that I did. <clears throat> and what you do is you just bring it in and you edit it. So I'll show you, hopefully, hopefully that rendering's done, and I'm going to use this to edit it. I might have to put a background in in Photoshop, though, because I think I did a... I think I did not have a sky in the background. Again, I wanted to show this because a lot of people um, have asked me what alternatives are there to Photoshop. There's other ones that are free open source tools that some of you might be familiar with that can actually do layers. Apparently, I keep forgetting my password, so let's do it from Revit. All right, looks like our rendering's going there. I'll have to see what the progress looks like. Uh, a little slower than I thought it was going to be. That's unfortunate. So I'll just bring a different image in to show you what I can do here. So let's add a photo. I'm going to browse for a rendering. All right, so I'm going to open this. 
So I just uploaded a rendering. Again, there's no sky background, unfortunately. You can't do that in here, but I want to show you how I use it for editing. So I'm going to add this photo. I'm not going to share it. And now I can click in here. And there's a little button called Edit. So you can put any photo in here and edit. It's pretty neat. So if I click Edit, I get all these tools on the right-hand side. And this is completely free. But some of the tools that I'm really excited about are things like details and HDR scape and drama. So there's a lot of the tools that I use Photoshop for, but they're built right into here. So details, for instance, is very much like my high definition rendering uh, tips. So if I crank up the structure, it starts pulling out a lot more detail in the image sharpness as well. Click apply. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll change a couple settings here. So details is nice. You can tune the image. Uh, this is just overall saturation, brightness, contrast. You can see I'm messing with that a little bit. Uh, HDR scape. Again, this is very similar to my high definition renderings. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see some of the changes. So what it's doing here, as you can see, as I'm cranking it up, not only is it adding a sky, it's kind of funny. I never saw that sky before. Um, it's actually adding detail and basically high definition radiosity to the image. Click apply. It added a sky too. How nice. I guess you can do a sky. Uh, the other really nice thing is you can do selective editing. So if I click selective editing, you can add control points around the image. So let's say I wanted to crank up the brightness in this area. I just click a control point. I can make it any size I want. And I can change the brightness of just that area. So hopefully you can see it. What I'll do is I'll drag it around a little bit. You can start seeing it's glitching out on me a little bit. But what it's doing is that circle you see, it's changing the brightness within that circle. And then you can add multiple control points. So you can, you can move them around the screen. So now you can start selectively changing the brightness of the image, which is pretty powerful. Let me cancel that because I don't know where that's going. Again, you could also do things like tilt shifting and center focus. So these are a lot of really, really neat tools that are completely free on a web browser platform. And again, they, they can do a lot to your renderings. If you pull, you know, so I'm just doing a little center focus there. Yeah, you can pull these around. Our rendering is about halfway done. Cancel that. So while that rendering's finishing, I guess I can tell you a couple other things. So first, I want to thank everyone for coming. I guess I'm running out of time. I mean, I didn't get as far as I wanted to. I wanted to add a little more detail. But uh, I think my point was a little, I mean, I think I was trying to prove my point, which is you can use Revit for design, and, and you can use it in your workflow, and you can be pretty quick with it. Um, granted, this isn't the most beautiful Pritzker Prize winning piece of architecture, but uh, I think it's pretty developed for uh, 53 minutes of time. And uh, once that rendering is done, we'll take a look at it. To get a little more detailed, um, for those of you who have not checked it out, check out BIM After Dark Volume 1. For those of you watching this video, you're in luck because I'm going to give you a little offer code that's only to people who can watch this video or have seen this video. So if you use offer code Happy Hour when you're purchasing any package of Volume 1, you'll save a little bit there. And then finally, Volume 2. So I've actually been home working on Volume 2 for the past week nonstop. Um, my voice, I'm surprised, doesn't sound very hoarse, but I've been recording and re-recording videos. Uh, some of you might have came here to find out when the launch date is for, for Volume 1, or Volume 2, I mean. So I've set up a little view here so you guys can check it out. So there it is. You're the first to know before anyone else that BIM After Dark Volume 2 is set to release on January 15th, 2015. So make sure you mark your calendars. I'm going to type this date on Monday in a post so you guys can see. Um, and it'll be up there for good. But January 15th, 2015 is BIM After Dark Volume 2. So definitely keep an eye out for that and more information on that. Uh, it basically expands and goes to the next level of Volume 1 where Volume 1 was all about design and presentation. Volume 2 is going to be how do you take this presentation model, and I use an actual sample from Volume 1, and turn it into a set of construction documents. Um, I think it's been, it, I've set it up to be pretty easy to follow, um, really take the, a lot of the junk and gunk out of, out of all the details and just show you what you need to know. So I'm pretty excited for it. Again, January 15th, 2015. 
and um, offer code happy hour. So let's check our rendering. I was really hoping the rendering would be done. I tried. Let's see. Oh, it's so close. It's so close. Well, I'll post the rendering in the in the post on Monday. Let me see if there's any questions. I haven't even looked over, guys. Hold on. I know I see some scrolling here. Oh, GIMP. GIMP is the name for um, of the open source uh, software I was talking about for Photoshop. I keep forgetting the name of it. Um, uh, somebody asked if you can import a PDF file as background. Uh, Revit. Revit doesn't even like images, so I would highly suggest not doing that, even if it let you. Uh, I would just suggest exporting your PDF as an image, whether it's a JPEG or a TIFF or something like that. These are these are all just scans, but I've done in the past where I've just exported PDFs as as JPEGs or images. Uh, let's see. Somebody asked, Bo Bola asked, is there going to be a discount for existing customers of BIM After Dark Volume 1? I assume you're saying for Volume 2. And of course, uh, the those of you who have purchased Volume 1, you are awesome. And I will definitely, you will be the first to probably get an email about volume two and I may even be reaching out to you guys to take a look at it before it's even released. So 100% there will be some bonuses to those of you who already have volume one. Let me check the rendering one more time. Oh, the rendering's almost there. So what I'll do is when the rendering finishes, um, still got four minutes. If there's any more questions, by the way, uh, feel free to ask on Google Plus. Let me just make sure I didn't miss any. Do you mean taking new construction details? So somebody asked about volume two and are you going to take it into construction details? And yes, um, I'm not, I, you know, I, I don't plan on being a QA, QC consultant and standard setter, but I'm going to show you how I create a set of construction documents. Um, Actually, what I'm doing is basically creating a set of construction documents and recording and narrating it and then editing it afterwards. So it will be exactly exactly what I do. I'm not saying it's correct, but I think it'll help a lot of people who might get into those parts where you know, you're lost in the world of Revit and, uh, and pull you out of it. And then, of course, there's going to be a lot of little gems of things that I don't even realize I do on a daily basis, but are sort of highly productive ways to do things. So if there's any more questions, feel free to ask. I'll hang out for another three minutes, finish my drink. If not, thanks again for coming, guys. I'm going to, uh, again, I'll, I'll have a post up probably Monday, if not Tuesday, with all the details, with links to stuff I've talked about, um, even things that I didn't mention, which uh, if you notice, the glass in this rendering is, is looking a little different. That's a tutorial I had in the past. Um, you know, the HDR, all the Photoshopping stuff, everything. Um, again, if you uh, thanks for downloading the, the ebook. If you didn't download it, uh, it can be found at bimafterdark.com slash ebook. Uh, the post-processing piece is very, very important. Let's see. Will I post the video? Yes. Um, Connor asked if I'll post the video to, to my channel. Um, I believe the the Google Air broadcast uh, automatically stops and it's it, it posts it to my YouTube channel. Depending on the quality of that, I might, I'm actually recording this on my local as well. I might uh, take that one down and put a new one up, but either way, it will be on my YouTube channel and it will be on the blog as well. I know I went really fast, which is why I wanted to record it. Um, so you can go back and, and check out different pieces of it. Uh, Bola, I, I see your question. Uh, feel free to shoot me an email, jeff at the revitkid.com, and we can talk. Six fifty nine, and look at that. We're, I mean, four fifty nine, and we're so close to finishing the rendering. That was close. That was close. Uh, Brent asked, any good suggestions on how to set up the project browsers naming and organization? I do have some suggestions. That's actually an entire piece of volume two. I probably don't have time to go into it now, considering it's almost five, and I want to 
run afterwards. But uh, in volume two, I definitely, definitely go into it. I have a whole section on on browser organization and view view type organization. Um, so keep a lookout for that. I might even post it as a free tutorial uh, running up to the launch. So keep an eye out on the blog. I'm looking for more questions in here. This is kind of weird. It doesn't post the questions in chronological order. Can we access it? Can we have access to... Bola asked if we can have access to the tutorial today. Um, if you mean this tutorial, then I believe it'll be there when I press stop broadcast. Again, if depending on the quality. Um, well, it looks like we are just out of time. I hope that was helpful. Again, I was being a little uh, ambitious there, but oh well. Thanks a lot for coming, guys. I really appreciate it. I hope to do more of these. Um, I actually had a webcam that I purchased and did not come in today. I was going to try and set up a little webcam so you can see what I was drinking before I did it. Maybe see where the uh, see where the Revit Kid creates these videos. Um, so look out for that in the future. I definitely want to have some more of these hangouts. Uh, shoot me an email or tweet me at the Revit Kid for input, etc. Um, thanks a lot, guys.